In this video, we're going to apply the steady state approximation to a reaction sequence that proceeds through a chain mechanism. So the overall gas phase reaction is ethylene reacting with hydrogen to make ethane. And the way this reaction proceeds is there's an initiation step to form these active intermediates. So these are much more reactive. They're going to be present in low concentrations. One of the hydrogen atoms can then collide with an ethylene to make, again, one of these reactive intermediates, ethyl radical. That can collide with a hydrogen to make our final product recreate hydrogen atom that can go back in this step and react again. And so we're going to run through this sequence many times once we initiate the reaction, once we've created the hydrogen radical, many times in the chain mechanism, go through the chain, and then there's some probability that a hydrogen and ethyl radical will recombine in a termination reaction to make product. The amount of product made by this step is small, because remember, both of these are present in low concentrations because they're very reactive. So hydrogen atom is most likely to collide with either hydrogen molecule or ethylene molecule. And so they have a much lower probability of colliding to go through this termination step. So what we want to do is, using this mechanism and the idea of the steady state approximation, determine how the rate of reaction is going to depend on the concentration of hydrogen and ethylene. And so the steady state approximation says that very quickly after we initiate, we build up to a steady state concentration of hydrogen. So we're going to assume that concentration doesn't change with time. And then also that means that the concentration of this doesn't change with time and it's zero. And so then to apply this, we're assuming also that these elementary steps. And what that means is we can write down the rate expressions directly. The rate of this first reaction would be first order in hydrogen and first order in ethylene. So now we look at all the steps involve hydrogen atoms, and I'll write down the expression and then describe what each of the terms is. Okay, so let's look at the change in the concentration of the hydrogen atoms with respect to time. In the first step, making hydrogen atoms, first order in ethylene, first order in hydrogen, so this is a plus sign here. In the second step, we're using up the hydrogen atoms, so a minus sign, and again, first order in the hydrogen atom concentration, first order in ethylene. In the third step, we're making hydrogen atoms, so that's a plus sign. And the fourth step, we're using them up, so again, a minus sign, the termination rate constant, concentration of the ethyl radical, the concentration of hydrogen atoms. And then we do the same thing for C2H5 dot, the ethyl radical. We make an initiation step. We make it in the second step. And we use it up third step and in the termination reaction. And so now we could add these two equations together. And if we add them together, of course, we notice because of the sign changes between these, this K3 term is going to cancel. This K2 term is going to cancel. And so when I add them, left side is zero. I have the initiation C2H4 times hydrogen minus KT or KI. The rate of initiation is equal to the rate of termination, which indeed what we would expect if everything is a steady state, then the rate that we're making hydrogen initiation step is the rate that we're using up in the termination step. So adding the two equations shows us that rate of initiation equals rate of termination. If instead I subtract this equation from this equation, Notice the first terms, the Ki terms, will cancel. K2 terms will cancel. These then will add. I'll have two of these, the minus sign, and two of the K3 terms with a plus sign. And so here's what we end up with when we subtract the two equations and just rearranging and canceling the twos. It says the rate of the second step equals the rate of the third step. So it says the rate of this step equals the rate of this step. And this makes sense from our argument that we're at steady state. In this step, we're making C2H5. 
if we don't use it up at the same rate, then we would be building up the concentration of C2H5, and we would not be at steady state. So applying the steady state approximation, now we have a relation between H radicals and C2H5, the ethyl radicals. So this says that the rate of propagation, which is what the second and third steps are, so the rates of the propagation steps are the same in this chain mechanism. The overall rate is how fast we're making product. So we're making product in the third step. Indeed, we're also making product in the fourth step. But remember, this happens a few times compared to many times as this goes through this chain mechanism. So the overall rate is going to be K3 times the dihydrogen gas phase concentration and the ethyl radical concentration. So the overall rate, of course, is the rate that C286 forms. So we'll work with this rate. We want to be able to write the concentration of hydrogen in terms of measurable concentrations. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the rate of initiation is equal to the rate of termination. And if we rearrange that, the concentration of hydrogen atoms, initiation rate constant, termination rate constant, H2, C2H4, and then the C2H5 radical. And then we're going to use the rate of propagation, the two steps, use this equation to write that C2H5 concentration is equal to just rearranging. And this is now in terms of concentration of hydrogen atoms. So we can substitute this here and we'll end up something where we can solve for the concentration of hydrogen atoms. So if we just combine those two equations and simplify, we'll get the hydrogen atom concentration in terms of these rate constants. Now, since our overall rate is the hydrogen atom concentration times C2H4, then our overall rate is K2 times the hydrogen atom concentration times ethylene. And so our final rate expression would be K2, K3, Ki over K termination to the one half because we have K2 to the first power in the numerator and K2 to the one half power in the denominator. And then first order hydrogen, first order in ethylene. And so note that this says if the rate constant for the termination reaction is larger, the rate's going to be slower. But if the initiation rate constant was larger, this rate would be faster. Right? So this is the overall rate that forms C2H6 ethane by hydrogenating ethylene in the gas phase by a, a chain reaction.